Hello and welcome, fellow humans, back to the Processing Tutorial series. Last episode, we finished off with the task of trying to create a face within Processing, and I wanted to go ahead and share my face that I made. I also did some things that I want to explain uh, because I did not introduce them last episode, and I apologize. So, in our first part, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the face first and foremost. So this is my face I created. I know it's horrifying, but bear with me. It's it's a pretty good face, you know. You could recognize it as a face. It's got uh, it's got eyes and a mouth and nose. Heck, it's even got a, a color in the background too, which is one thing that I wanted to discuss because I did not introduce the topic of background. Um, this line of code, background followed by three numbers. Uh, that draws a rectangle to the very back of the screen with the given um, given color. So right now I have it set to a greenish color with uh, a little bit of red and blue in addition to it. And that gives a nice green color for the background. And then I also have a head which I draw with a stroke of zero, meaning the outline is black. And then I fill it with this uh, color here. And then I also have a comment here. And a comment is a line of code that the computer skips over. So it goes directly from background to this stroke. And we use, as programmers, we use comments in order to locate, not really locate, but to put in our code what something does. So that I know when I'm going back, oh, this ellipse that draws the head you know this fill that belongs to the head and we can label it so that when we look back we know what something does so i've i written code for the head i have code for the eyes here i have code for the pupils i have codes for the nose and mouth and i have code for the teeth as well one other thing when you use a color function like stroke or fill or background and you only give it one parameter, that's one number, then it goes on a grayscale with uh, the number representing luminosity. So zero being full dark, and then 255, that represents full brightness or white color. So I use the blackness for the stroke, and then for here I have fill 255, meaning I want the white eyes. And I'm just going to show you again and kind of point to each part of the code. So I've got the, the head, which is the background, right here. The eyes, I fill up right here, along with the pupils, right afterwards. And then the nose and mouth, I draw with the same color, so I don't need to update the color after drawing one. And they represent it here. And then I have teeth, because I wanted to have teeth, and I thought it was fun looking. So now that we are finished going over past projects, I wanted to introduce today's topic, which is variables and the setup and draw function. So last episode, we kind of did a brief overview about variables in general, but didn't actually get to programming them into our sketch. So let's first go over again what, how you initialize a variable and give it a value and how you write that in processing. So in order to create a variable, you're going to need to write a specific type or the data type that it is. You're going to give it some sort of name. You're going to use equal sign to assign the value, and then you're going to give it a value and then finish it off with a semicolon, which kind of looks like a J. I'll try my best to make them not look like J's, but you, you get the idea. If it is at the end of a line, it's probably a semicolon. And so that's how you create a function or a variable within processing. As an example, we can say integer, and I'm going to call this x pause or x position, and I'm going to give it the value of uh, let's say 250. And then you would use this variable. You would use this in place of when you want to say 250. So, and when you're drawing an ellipse, for example. We're going to give it the value of x position, that's its name, and it would make sense if we used it as the position of the, the x, the x position, because that's its name. We want to try to keep those consistent. So we can say x pause here, 
And then we can also do the same thing for the Y. We can say a Y position here. And then the ellipse, we gotta give it a diameter as well. So we can say dia, dia. And then we're gonna have to, so we only have the X position defined right now. Uh, we're also going to need to initialize the Y position and dia variables, but we can do that once we get into processing. So the way that this is useful and like not just, oh boy, why have X position when I can just write 250 is you can do something like this. After you draw the ellipse, you draw one ellipse and then you can say, I want X pause. I want that to be updated to the value of 350. Let's just say. So, so processing, it reads this first line. It says, okay, I'm gonna have an integer variable. I'm gonna call it X position. And then it has this value of 250. Then it draws the ellipse with that specific X value. So it draws it with 250. And then it updates the value of the variable called exposition to 350. And then we can actually write the same exact code as above. And processing will write, will draw the ellipse at the value 350 rather than 250 because we've updated the value of exposition. That's how it's useful. We can reuse code that we've written uh, without needing to change every single number. So you don't have to write, oh, ellipse at 250 here and ellipse at 350 here. And that's how it's kind of useful in that way. So let's jump into processing and demonstrate how we can use variables properly. So we can, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the variables. So I'm gonna have integer x pause, and I'm gonna set that equal to the value of 250. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for a variable called y pause. Perfect. And then I'm gonna also have an integer for the diameter. And let's just set that to 100 for now. And then we can draw the ellipse here and give it the, the values defined above. So x pause, y pause, and then dia and dia. So now this should draw an ellipse to the screen with those specific parameters. But before we draw the ellipse, make sure, let's make sure to actually have a canvas to draw upon. So we're gonna say size and let's make it 600 by 600. And then let's also give this ellipse a color. So we're gonna fill it. Let's make it a nice red color. Give it 255 red, no green and no blue. And then let's also create a background for our ellipse to go upon. And let's make the background black. Now when we run this sketch, now we have a circle that's at the position 250 by 250 and it's 100 diameter and it's drawn upon a black background. Now let's do what we did in the code or in the, the whiteboard or rather and let's go ahead and update the ellipse's X position to something that's different and redraw the ellipse. So let's say X pause and let's update the value to 450. I think that's okay. And we might as well go ahead and update the Y position and let's also make it 450. And then we can take the same code that we wrote, we can copy it and we can paste it down here. Now when we run it, we should have two ellipses and they're offset from each other, like here and here say. And um, they're gonna be the same color because we haven't updated the color, but we um, should be able to see that. So let's go ahead and run it. And now you can see that's exactly what we have. We have two ellipses and they're at different positions because we, although we have the same code that is drawing the ellipses, because we've changed the values of X pause and Y pause, the value of which the ellipse is drawn is also changed and it doesn't affect the original ellipse either. And that is because we change the values of the X pause and Y pause after we draw the ellipse to the screen. 
So let's go ahead and have a little bit more fun with this. Let's go ahead and change the fill color as well. So we can say fill and instead of 255, let's just give it a, a new value of uh, the dia. So now this should be have the color of a color red that's set to 100 rather than 255 above, but we don't have to say it. And instead, when we run this code, you can see that it's a little less red. It's a bit darker. But if we were to increase the dia to 200 and then run it, now it's closer to the color of the original. It's just a little bit darker. And it's also both circles are bigger in addition to that. So that's an example of how you can use variables within your code. And we're going to move on to the second topic of today, which is going to be the setup and the draw functions within processing. So I'm over at our whiteboard here and let's go ahead and make separate pads for both setup and draw because they both deserve their own pads here, I think. So what do I mean by setup and draw functions? What, is, what does that word mean? Um, what the function is in processing is, well, in any language, a function, let me actually go ahead and create a new area for this. A function is something that has a, a value as an input. So it takes input and it does something to that value. So it, it does something here and then it has an output. And this may be very familiar to those who've taken algebra classes or something similar to that, uh, where we have this idea of a function that takes in an X value and it gives you a Y value and you can plot those values along some sort of axis. It's exactly the same thing here, but instead of using X and Y for an output, we can have any number of inputs and we can have any number of outputs as well. And the function that does something, this does is very, very vague for a reason. And that's because the does doesn't necessarily have to do anything with the input or output. We can actually have no input and no output. And the function is only about the does. And that does could be anything from drawing a rectangle to the screen or a circle of some kind, or to change the color of some sort of function. Or it can have an additional effect such as running the function every single frame that the computer is running. For example, 60 times a second. And that is what we're going to get into when we talk about the draw function. But the first function we're talking about is going to be the setup function. And the way that we write it in processing is we write void setup followed by two parentheses and then we have an opening curly brace and then we have some sort of code here and then we end the setup function with a closing curly brace. And what kind of code do you put in here? You put things that you want your sketch to have um, initialized at the very beginning. So things such as uh, the size of your canvas or any uh, variable declarations that need to be changed after you call the size of the canvas. Um, so typically you'll see size here with the, the indicating parameters within the setup function. And heck, you can even call background in here if you wanted to, up to you to have like the background color of the scene. So now that we know what setup does, it runs once at the very beginning of your sketch. What does draw do? Well, draw, we can have drag over here. Draw, contrary to setup, um, it runs 60 times a second. So every single second, draw runs 60 times. I know that's just repeating myself, but I think it's worth necessary. I think it's necessary to repeat myself there. And we define it in the same kind of way. We write void, and then we have draw followed by two parentheses, and then an opening curly brace. We have code, and then we end it with a curly brace like so. So why do you need to draw things 
60 times a second. Like we just have a little face and it, we just got to display it once, right? The thing that we want to do is instead of just drawing something once, we want to draw something, change some values, and then draw it again. And if you've ever played around with like a flip book, like a, like a little sticky note flip book, it, you draw something onto the flip book page and then the next, the next page underneath it or above it, I guess, is the same exact drawing, but just slightly different. And you keep doing this over and over again. And as you flip the book, you see the picture changing in real time. And that's the kind of idea we're going to go with for our draw function. So in our draw function, we're going to have some sort of value for an ellipse. And we're going to have it be represented by the X position that we've written before. And then we're going to go ahead and change the X position within the draw. And we're going to be changing it by adding one to it. So every single time it adds one to it. And then, so with what this should do is like in your flipbook, you have a little circle and every single next layer of the flipbook, the circle moves a little bit and it kind of looks like the circle is going like, view, view, view. we're going to do the same exact thing here. So we draw a little ellipse, we change the position very slightly and redraw the ellipse, change the position very slightly, redraw the ellipse over and over again, 60 times a second. So let's go ahead and open up the processing here. And let's get rid of all of this code that we don't need anymore. And let's go ahead and program both the setup and the draw functions into our sketch. So we say void setup, parentheses, curly braces and curly braces. And also for draw, so we say void draw followed by parentheses and some curly braces. And then in our setup, let's go ahead and define the size. We're going to have it be 600 by 600. And let's also draw a background color. Uh, let's have a background color of, uh, let's go for red. Not background, it's background. There we go. And then in our draw, let's go ahead and draw that ellipse. So we have an ellipse at X pause, Y pause with the diameter of Dia. And now if we run this, it's going to be look exactly the same as before, just with colors slightly different. So we've got this white circle against a red background. Um, so that's exactly what we did previously. So that, uh, let's actually give it a color. Let's give it a nice green color, just so it looks terrible on the video. Super contrasted. I don't want to save. Uh, it's just so it looks terrible on video, and indeed it does. Uh, so we've got this green circle and a red background. So in our in our whiteboard, we change the value of X pause by one every single frame. So let's go ahead and do that. We can say X pause and we assign it the value or we assign it the value of X pause plus one. But we can do this in a much simpler way. Get rid of this and instead write this. So X pause plus equals one. That'll change the value of X pause by one every single time that it's called. So now when we run this, we should see the ellipse move from its position over to the right across the screen. And when we run it, ta-da, that's what we get. We get this circle and it's moving across the screen. And you may notice that these streaks are present right here. And the streaks are because we only draw the background once. Remember, we drew the background within the setup, not the draw. So if you want to remove those crease marks, change the background from inside of setup to the beginning of draw. And now when you run it, now the circle doesn't have the streaks anymore. Perfect. So. Now, how can we change this so that it's more interactive, if you will? I like interactivity. And one thing that we can do is instead of having X position be updated uh, by plusing, by adding one every frame, we can actually set it to the position of the cursor, the mouse cursor. And the way that you do that is you say X position, gonna assign it the value of mouse X. 
and mouse x is a variable with that's within processing that has the value of the mouse's position. And there's also one for y, so let's go ahead and do that. y pause is equal to mouse y. And now when we run this, now the circle is tracked to our cursor. Now we can move around the scene with our mouse and the circle follows suit. Since we're messing around anywhere, let's go ahead and have a little bit extra fun. So we can have the background be red and then let's change the blue value to be mouse, mouse X as well. And then the green value to be mouse Y. So now when we go ahead and run this, now, as we move our mouse around, the color of the background changes based on where our cursor is. Very, very cool. Now, you can do this with mouse X and mouse Y, or you can have a dedicated variable being doing that and change based on some other value, uh, like um, what time of day it is, or where the circle's leftmost part of the corner of the circle is. I don't know, make something up, have fun. You know, that's that's the point of this coding is to have fun and to be creative and explore and do your own thing. So I'm just doing a very, very simple example of a circle on the screen that follows the mouse. But you can go crazy. You can have a whole face that falls around the screen and then the, the eyes change based on where the face is on the screen. You can have as much fun as you want to. You don't have to use Dia and you don't have to use X pause and Y pause. You can come up with your own variable names. It can be anything. It can be uh, a monkey and set that value to 400. Now you have a variable called monkey that's set to 400 and you can do something with that variable. You know, you can use it anywhere you want to. So go ahead and have fun and try something with setup and draw and using variables. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.